it's good to see you here. I'm just going to post a link and we'll get on our way. Be on our streaming journey. Stream gang. Um, how are we tonight? Let's take a look at the chart. I haven't looked at the chart today because I've been screenwriting, I've been doing my actual real job. How is everyone this fine summer evening? Sound off. <laughs> if anybody's listening. Which, like I said, Bitcoin ratings are down. For one thing, anybody working in television will tell you that ratings always go down in the summertime. People are like out, you know, they're like, there's you know, more daylight in the summer, like they have more parties. They... People just don't watch TV in the summertime. So that's one thing. But also I think ratings are generally down for Bitcoin just in general. It's not just the summertime that ratings are down. It's that, um, you know, readings on the shitcoin are down, just in general. I think that's obvious to anybody who's paying attention. Um, and hopefully that means that we're, we're nearing the bottom. I mean, I personally don't think that we're going to hit the bottom, like, for months. Like, I think we've got, like, at least like a few more months of this just like miserable grinding sideways to go but um i think we're getting closer i think sentiment is just this sort of like wearied like just worn out feeling where like most of the normies have pretty much given up like anybody who entered like sort of in the fall to like thanksgiving to winter has just like they're they're done they've been bled dry uh, the institutions and the whales have just squeezed them for like everything they've got. Um, you can't squeeze blood from the stone. That's, you know, that's an old saying. Uh, yeah, early today, DV. Um, you know what? Ideally, I would always stream at this time at like 7 p.m. my time, which that you're, where you are, that's probably what, like 5 a.m.? By the way, DV, I'm very concerned about your sleep schedule. <laughs> But do you know the main reason why today I was just, like, I honestly wasn't done screenwriting today, but I was like, you know what? Um, this overhead light, when, like, when I start streaming, like, when it's totally dark outside, like, the overhead light in my living room it just does a number on my face. Like, it just makes me look haggard and, like, terrible. Oh, I, so I guess pretty close to where you are. 420. Okay. Is that, like, a pot joke, TV? Um... I was watching myself on stream and I was just sort of like, oh my god, I look terrible with this like overhead, like if I was directing myself in a horror movie and I wanted to like make myself look as bad as possible, I would light it with like this, you know, harsh overhead light with like no reflectors and like 
like no flattering like front light like just just terrible like you know like I was like looking at myself on the you know on the phone and I was just sort of like Jesus Julie like do you have no like sort of sense of like just uh vanity <laughs> you know like like if I'm going to be a director soon like what are you gonna you know what reel am I gonna show them like how terribly like I directed myself like you know like how unflatteringly I directed my own face like on the stream like Jesus Christ like you got to get it together girl um so I was like, okay, so you need to actually like put your screenwriting aside and actually like stream at like 7 p.m. when it's still light out so I can actually like look decent on, st on stream. Um, Dini, I don't think people understand. Like, you know, women suffer a lot in this world. And, you know, this is probably like, you know, number like 1,700 on the, on the ways in which we suffer. But like, just a simple thing like streaming, like, you know, a guy can just like get on the internet and like, Put himself out there like acting a fool and just like no one cares about how he looks but like if a woman does it like oh my god like she looks terrible with this overhead light and it's like 10 times worse and like the guy looks terrible with overhead light you know what i mean like it's just it's not good dude okay let's try, let's take a look at the chart let's actually like stay focused and like you know talk about the reason why we're here it might just be you and me dude like i don't think anybody else is even jumping in on the combo um And by the way, I am in my bathing suit because I'm going to swim after this. I Ideally, like, I swim every day, but again, with the streaming thing, like, having to juggle, like, screenwriting, streaming, trading, investing, like, it's like, it's a lot of balls to, like, keep in the air. It's like, it's a pretty intense lifestyle, I have to say. It's, um, it's really hard. Um, this is my first time looking at the chart all day, so let me just kind of, like, get my bearings figure out what we're doing here and again it's because I'm like pretty focused on this movie I'm finishing which is pretty intense what are you what have you been up to DB how's how, how's your summer going yeah multitasking um you know ideally I would just be focused on the script and that's it but it's the kind of thing where like you can't just sort of like put the rest of your life on hold, you know, like, it, it's like, it just doesn't work that way. Um, you have to kind of, like, keep your life running, and, um, so I think we go up a little bit from here. What do you think on Bitcoin? This is the four hour I'm looking at here. I mean, it's not a home run. But the sixth hour seems like wants to go up from here too. Kind of bummed FMF is going slow. I'm still looking to buy BTC with the added critical levels. Not feeling it yet. Um, yeah. Uh, are you looking to buy BTC? Like, uh, where would you say? Like, uh, are you still looking for the, like, you know, 4.9? I mean, I was just saying, I think before you got on stream, and by the way, you can, um, if you want, you can um, connect to my Discord and like we can chat on voice. Um, do you want to chat with me on voice on my Discord? I mean, you don't have to, obviously, but like, I just thought that like, that's an option, you know. I always forget to, um, I always forget to connect to the voice on, uh, <laughs> while I'm on stream. 
Okay, now I'm connected to uh, Discord voice. Um, so are you are you kind of waiting for the like 4.9, 4.8, 4.9 level to like buy more Bitcoin with fiat? Like I feel pretty certain that we're going to get there. It might just be like a wick there. Like it might be a good idea to kind of just like put in bids on spot, like on Coinbase Pro or something or, or Gemini or wherever you buy your, your uh, spot Bitcoin. Um, but I don't think it's going to be anytime soon. I think it's going to be like months. Like, I think we're going to have this like slow, depressing downward grind with like occasional little like bull traps and like fake outs up. Um, but I think this is going to be like wearying, you know, like I don't think we're like near total capitulation. Like, I think it feels like it to some people. And I think, oh, you're no headphones. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, you're prepared to wait. Yeah, I am too. Um, in fact, it would sort of suit my purposes for it to kind of like wait like a few months. So, but but I don't. But my prediction of the market isn't um, just based on like what would be good for me personally. Like I've been saying this exact thing like literally since January, February. Like I've been predicting this general sort of like down sideways market for the rest of the year um, for months and months and months. And I basically haven't deviated from this prediction that we were going to be like, you know, down slash sideways all the way through the summer into the fall into like basically through the fall. And then that we would get sort of like um, a little bit of like a hockey stick into the uh, winter. Um, and I haven't deviated from that prediction. Um, yeah, I agree. Bull market doesn't come instantly. And I just I, you know, I'm, I'm partly basing this off of charts, but I'm also basing it off of sort of like sentiment. Um, I feel like we haven't gotten near capitulation yet, just in terms of like, people still have hope, <laughs> like people still are holding, people are still sort of like, like, we haven't reached despair yet, you know, like, we, like not enough people have quit the market, like I did title this stream like ratings are down, but you know, ratings have to, like, people have to be angry, you know, like, people have to, like, completely give up, like, just completely, like, you know, go get jobs, <laughs> like, um, rage quit, like, you know, quit discords, like, turn on their friends, well, we've seen a lot of turning on their friends, let's face it, like, um, you know, in my movie, you know, as you know, I'm writing a movie about this space, and, um, that's one of the things, you know, as a screenwriter, I always, um, Oh girl, December was a month I'll never forget. Uh, such a euphoric month of parties and winning, huh? Looking at it now, it's kind of sad. Well, exactly. Like, that's the kind of thing that, like, as a screenwriter, um, you know, you're always sort of, like, looking at the big picture and kind of, like, uh, thinking thematically. And so, um, as I think back over the course of this past, like, year, year and a half, I'm like, wow, like, like, I remember... <laughs> I remember this like one moment where I took a walk along the beach and I, I like literally said to myself, I'm going to be rich for the rest of my life. <laughs> like, like that's how much like euphoria I was feeling. Like that was such a like characteristic moment of the bull run. Um, and then like, you know, it, this is such a classic like, you know, movie like transition cut to <laughs> like, like the difference between saying that to yourself and like, <laughs> what came next? <laughs> Which is like, so hilarious. <laughs> it's like, it's so classic, you know? Uh, and, 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 and in the movie, like, I'm definitely gonna show like, you know, like, yeah, like that, that month of December where like people like you and everybody around the world was like having this month of parties and winning and like, you know, like, like we can't stop winning and like, this is so easy. And like, and don't you remember how like, you know, everybody on Twitter was like, you know, if, if you're not getting rich, you know, if you have access to a computer and you're not getting rich, like, you're a fool and you're an idiot. <laughs> like, how obnoxious everybody was and, like, how quiet they all are now. And, like, some of them just, like, basically disappeared from Twitter and just, like, just stopped posting because, like, you know, the fact is, like, everybody's a genius in a bull market. And, like, the fact is, like, trading a bear market is a lot harder and I personally learned how to trade in a bull market and now that I'm you know having to kind of relearn how to trade in a bear market like it's it's not it's not as uh as easy frankly um 
Okay, the eight hour on Bitcoin wants to go up to, like, I say we go up a little bit here. Um, and I'm going to call, let's see. I say we go to, like, maybe 64, 65 here. I don't think we go up a lot from here. I don't know, maybe we could go to 68. Let me look at the, let me look at the 12 hour. But so like, as a screenwriter, like this space is like, so, um, I don't know, it's just, it's a treasure for me, you know, like, it, it, cause, cause one of my sort of personal theories about like how films work is that like film is all about juxtaposition. It's all about like highs and lows, like big and small, like, like pairing, like, um, something shocking next to something shot, you know, like, um, I've seen lots of situations like those in Discord, people just abandoning the Lambo dream. Yeah, and not only that, but also like um, just recently, it feels to me like people are really turning on each other, just like in personal ways. And that's something that I'm really uh, excited to like explore in the movie, just the ways in which like, like in the bull market, people were like all like joining together and people were so happy and everybody was best friends and like there was just such a sense of like connection and euphoria and everybody was so excited. And then in the bull market, like it, it almost feels like like the deeper into the bull market we got, the more people were like at each other's throats and just like ripping each other to shreds, like accusing each other of LARPing, like um, just quick to like call each other out on just the like smallest infraction, like um, just, you know, just hurtful, you know, just like just really cruel and hurtful and mean and in and, and, and ways in which like I feel like if they hadn't been so just kind of like just just hammered by this bear market I don't think people would have been acting that way and and, and you know from my sort of like um, you know God's eye view in the sky for, as a screenwriter, like, it's been kind of like, I've just been making notes the whole time, like, just, you know, writing stuff down, like, every day, literally, in my script, like, you know, July 12th, like, this happened, July 13th, this happened, because um, I wanted to make sure that I kind of remembered the chronology and, like, everything that's been happening, because so much is happening. <laughs> um, but so when you say you see a lot of situations like those in discourse, people just abandoning the Lambo dreams, do you mean like, like people went from like, oh, I'm going to be rich to suddenly they're like all like butthurt and like angry and like saying like, uh, yeah, yeah, that's kind of dumb. They act like you're, they're your friends and then they turn on you by for the slightest thing because they're not in the optimal mental state. I mean, exactly. Like, and I feel like we see that in like big and small ways. Like we see that in like, um, just all over the place really, you know, like, um, I mean, I can, I can name like five examples off the top of my head, like not just with me personally, but with people I know. And like, you know, just all these like interpersonal conflicts that I feel like wouldn't have happened during the bull run, but that I, I feel like are a result of, of just people being on like, on edge you know like people are on edge this market it has just you know the, the the bear market is designed to like push us to the edge you know it's it, that's the, that's the point it's like people with deep pockets they can wait forever you know like they're not worried like they've got years <laughs> you know like um and it's 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 the little guys like us who uh you know, that's what, that's the meaning of capitulation, you know, it's, it's to like push the little guys to the point where like, you know, when you see these like wicks at the bottom where like, uh, the wicks at the bottom means that like, you know, people get sad, they get depressed, you know, not just, not, not, a, not even the B bottom necessarily, but it's more the like long sideways bottom. Um, like it goes multiple ways. Speculators with Lambo posters start to understand you need to actually trade and not get lucky. Then the people that should be learning are giving up. Well, exactly. Because the bear market is, is when you actually learn. Because, you know, in a bull market, um, you know, 
literally anyone can do it. And, and it's just, you know, it, a, a bull market is almost basically a Ponzi, you know, where, where you just have to get in early enough and then you dump on the next person who gets in and then they dump on the next person who gets in and you basically just have to like ride it until the bubble pops. I mean, that's basically, you know, what a parabolic bull market like we experienced in 2017 is. But um, a bear market is where you actually learn how to trade and you learn how to invest. And, um, and you learn how to like not get dumped on or, or, or you learn how to be the, the person who's earlier in the food chain and how to be the dumper rather than the dumpy, um, which is something that I'm definitely learning now. Um, but I, I, you know, I sort of have two hats right now. And one of my hat is as a trader and as an investor. And so, you know, that hat is not very happy, you know, like that in identity is obviously like, you know, kind of suffering in this bear market and it's not fun and it's, you know, it, it's obviously been painful and I've been suffering just like everybody else and I'm on edge and I'm stressed out because um, it's hard to trade this thing. I mean, I'll admit it. It's, it's hard. It's frustrating. Um, you know, it's uh, everybody's on edge about this because um, I, I, you know, if, if any normies are watching this, um, the problem in crypto with, with a bear market like this is that all of the assets are so correlated that it's not like you can be, you know, unless you hedge into fiat, which, you know, hopefully people do. But, um, you know, if you if you're holding, let's say, a, an ICO or you're holding ETH or something like that, like if Bitcoin crashes, then like everything crashes with it and your your losses sort of start to compound because like. Um, you know, the one asset price crashes and then like your entire portfolio crashes like all at once and, and there's sort of like nowhere you can exit to to sort of like save yourself except for maybe like Tether, which is, you know, that's a whole nother ball of wax. Um, and so that's why the, the, the losses compound fast, but also why the gains compound fast as well. Um, and so it starts to like, it messes with your head a little bit, like it, it it's psychologically punishing because um, it's it's frightening. Uh, first is the USD value dump, then BTC value goes lower, resulting in double loss. Exactly, um, and it, that's a difficult concept um, for that. That is unless you hedge exactly, and that's a difficult concept to like, you know, sort of uh, conceptually wrap your mind around. Um, and I, I would argue that it's it's probably what scares a lot of normies away from investing in this space because um, it's, it's it's sort of like a newer thing that most people, even if they've invested in, in legacy markets for years, um, it's it's hard to kind of conceptualize and get used to. And um, and unless you're kind of like unless you have like a PhD in math or something, it's um, it's hard to like rapidly kind of like calculate ratios in your head or even on paper, you know, even if you have like a ratio calculator, it's like, it's hard to kind of like get those ratios right. And um, so like figuring out hedging and all that kind of stuff is, um, it's tricky. It's, it's really not easy. And so that's what makes a bear market in crypto particularly punishing because it's like, it's almost like double or triple punishing, you know, cause it's like you get like hit on like three sides. Um, and why hedging is so important. Um, so yeah, it's tough. I mean, I'm just trying to sort of like echo that like, this is not easy, man. Um, but like I said, I do think that um, we're going up here on Bitcoin. And, th and that's, that's also the reason why we always start the stream by looking at Bitcoin first, because um, right now, everything is pretty much correlated with the Bitcoin price. And that's until um, we start getting, um, we start getting major pairings with like alt pairings with uh, USD or fiat um, on major exchanges. And when that happens, everything is going to start being less correlated and it's all gonna get to sort of be a lot easier. And like, it, it's, it's not gonna start like crashing all at once or going up all at once. DV says, I think people thought crypto trading is different than normal markets. Lol. Well, yes, you can be a winner in bull market without concept of risk management. As soon as there's a slap, there goes the blood. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and the thing about 
you know, crypto is exponential, but then it's also exponentially down too, which it's, it's like people forget that part. It's exponentially up, but then it's exponentially down too. And um, that's what makes it like really punishing. Um, because you can win big and fast, but you can also lose big and fast. And um, that's, uh, it's tough, you know, it's, uh, it is not easy. Um, so this is the daily here on Bitcoin. And actually, let's look at our squid template, which I'm still kind of learning. Hmm. Yeah, I think we're going up a little bit on the on the 12 hour. I'm going to say to sixty six, maybe. Let me know if you agree or disagree, DV. Um, looks like people don't like this earlier stream time because I don't think we're getting a lot of uh, viewers. But that's okay. I like that you're here, DV. You're like my, um, you're my most loyal supporter and my best supporter because you actually talk to me here. Because it's so hard to do this when I don't have anyone to talk to. <laughs> Okay, that's what I think about Bitcoin. I think we're going up, at least in the short term, and then we'll probably go back down after that, but you know, we'll get a little short term pump at least. That's a good ETH. I'm in Discord most of the time. Could see that hitting if Microtrend started green. Um, I think I miss what you're responding to. We must have some lag between us, DV. Maybe because you're in Spain. <laughs> Hold everything for less. The pack store save event is going on now at the Home Depot. And the shelves are full of smart. Oh, are you responding to when I when, when I said 66 and then down? I'm looking at ETH now. Oh, 68. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking 66 to 68 maybe and then back down on Bitcoin. Now I'm looking at ETH. And again, I think we have, I think we get a little up on ETH in the six hour, but just a little bit, not much. Let's see. Hey, Mighty Mikey, good to see you here. How are you tonight?
I'm looking at E2USD right now, Mighty Mikey. So yeah, I think we go up here on ETH. And I'm going to call... Maybe even as far as like like four seventy eight like here four seventy eight to four ninety Hey from Colombia, I spent about a month in Colombia. Um I loved it there, Ortiz. So good to see you. Where in Colombia do you live? Um, I'm good. Thanks for being online and blessing the internet with my beauty and most importantly, educating us. Well, you're welcome, Mighty Mikey. And you just you just keep it coming, Mighty Mikey. <laughs> just don't hesitate to, 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 to keep those uh, compliments coming. Um, Ortiz, where do you live in Colombia? Because I loved Colombia. I loved, I, I spent some time on the fincas in, the co in coffee country and I loved it there. Such a just beautiful experience. Particularly this one where, like, uh, I was the only person staying in the finca, and this giant parrot, like, like, perched on this railing where I, like, sat outside to eat breakfast every morning, where this couple who only spoke Spanish, like, cooked me breakfast every morning. And, like, they didn't speak any English, and I didn't speak any Spanish. And, like, I stayed there for, like, two full days, and I remember thinking, like, maybe, like, this isn't even a finca, and they don't even know why I'm here, but, like... They just thought that this weird American just showed up and like just started cooking for me and they don't even know why I'm here. <laughs> Can't you guys imagine me doing something like that? <laughs> they were just the loveliest couple and they cooked they cooked these amazing meals for me and they I stayed at their lovely finca and it was just wonderful. I loved it. You guys can look at my Instagram if you want to see some pictures. Um, my Instagram is just Julie Bush. And I was all by myself in Colombia for an entire month, and I didn't speak any Spanish. <laughs> and my, my dad was so worried. He was like, oh my god, like something terrible is going to happen or whatever. And I'm just sort of like, one of my mantras in life is I am safe wherever I go. Um, okay, so I think we go up here on ETH. That's my call. Let's let's call it at like 475, I think. Oh, you live in Barranquilla, but you're in Cartagena today. I loved Cartagena. Although when I was there, there were like a lot of tourists there, which obviously I know that I'm a tourist too. But um, I think there must have been some kind of like festival or something when I was there because it was just like too many. I mean, the city of Cartagena itself is very beautiful and it's, it, it almost looks like like a like a Disney pirate city, except it's real. Everybody should go visit it. It's, it's fabulous. It's, it's really incredible. But there, there were too many tourists for my taste. Um, I visited Colombia because I just had always heard it was so beautiful. And, um, and I, I just finished this like really intense movie that like really like, it, it kind of like wasted me. Like I just was like exhausted. Like my health was destroyed. Like I was, it was such an intense experience, this movie I did that I just needed to like, kind of like get on a different hemisphere. <laughs> like I needed to like, just literally like change hemispheres. Like I was like so wiped out like by this movie. It was just, just a really intense experience. So I just, I just left for a month and I just was like, I need to go be somewhere else for a while. And I just kind of, and the thing is I actually was um, supposed to direct m my own movie. And so what I was sort of telling my reps was like, okay, well, I'm just going to go to Colombia for a month and I'm going to write this movie that I'm supposed to direct. And then while I was there, like the deal to direct uh, my movie sort of like fell apart negotiations. So then I was sort of like, oh, now what? You know, it's just kind of a mess. But um, your family's from Bolivia and Ecuador. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, but you're from the USA. Well, fabulous. Um, yeah, I hear Ecuador is really beautiful too. I've never heard anything about Bolivia, really. Um... And here we are, all joined together by our interest in um, crypto. 
Okay, so let's look at ADX. I heard that this was a good one that's sort of at the bottom now. Um, so let's look and see what's going on. So ADX, I have no idea what this thing does. I mean, you know, this is a shit coin. <laughs> but it does look like, like this is the three day here. So this looks like a classic bottom bottom chart right here. So you guys can see the Stoke, the Stoke, Stoke? I don't even know how to say that. Um, it's curling up. We've got a green MFI. We've got a cross on the uh, MACD here. Uh, this is pretty much totally bottomed out on the three day. Um, this is a great area to start scaling in here. I'll even do a little drill ring for you guys. Um, this is basically a classic like rising or falling, descending wedge, falling wedge. How do you say it? Falling wedge? Uh, There we go. Um, that looks great to me. Let's look at the daily. So the daily looks good too. So the MFI is sort of uh, oversold on the daily, so um, that doesn't look as good. But the Stoke is still bottomed out. MACD, I can't really see this. I need to change these MACD colors because I can't see these so well. I wonder what MACD colors would show up better. You know, I need to do that right now. Okay, can you guys see that better? Maybe. Okay, but the most important thing on, on this chart isn't so much this, like, falling wedge here. I would say more important than that would be uh, this here. You guys see this horizontal line here? Uh, it's like exactly bottomed out here on this horizontal. And that's what we're looking for here on the daily. It doesn't have to be on the daily, but like daily, three day, weekly, any like higher time frame. It's hit this like uh, long term horizontal support here. So um, this, is a, this is a great buy. This is ready to go, I'd say. Um, let's look at ICX. Okay, so this one's 
less clear cut. We've got a green MFI buy signal on the three day. Stoke uh, bottomed out. We're about to cross on the MACD. This is all in the three day. Name a better duo than XRP and Coinbase. Um, maybe any of the ones they announced today instead of XRP. <laughs> DV, is that a joke? <laughs> uh, DV, what do you think about this ICX chart? Because theoretically, this is like, you know, this like giant falling wedge here, but at the same time, like, I sort of feel like if it goes below, like, this level here, this is on the three day here, I feel like if this goes below this, this sort of like, area where it is right now it's just like a free fall what do you think yeah is anybody who's watching this all pumped because um coinbase list you know or said that they're exploring listing those what is it? Uh, Xerox, uh, Bat, um, Stellar Lumens. Um, what else? Did I miss one? Can you put B-Bands to 25 too? Yes. Is that where you keep your B-Bands? Or is that like standard? Um... Yeah, they're adding, they didn't say that they're actually adding those, they said that they're exploring uh, adding those, which I feel like means they're absolutely going to add them because they wouldn't, they wouldn't put out an official tweet like that unless they were absolutely going to do it. Like, they're not irresponsible. Um, DV, do you keep your Belt Bollingers on 25 too? Is that like a standard thing? Am I kind of like doing it wrong or something? But remember, this chart is a three-day. Um, do you want to look at the daily? So I feel like this here is like a falling wedge. Uh, but I feel like if we break like right where we, we're at now, here, I'll draw what I'm looking at. So I feel like this here is like a horizontal line of support there but um, this is kind of a we've kind of got like a falling wedge going here Uh, yeah, it's my personal preference by looking at it. If it goes lower, it won't be much. Okay, so you think that um, ICX is getting close to ready to go then, huh? How did you come to this personal preference on Bollinger's? Because I've never actually heard of that before. Yeah, at least for some bounce. So you don't think ICX is, is prepped for a, a breakout then? Let's look at the let's look at the squid. What the hell? Why is this so slow? What's wrong? Uh, 
Lots of trading, haha. Ha. Small change, but works good for scalping. Okay. So do you think I should keep mine that way, even if I don't scalp? Like if I do like mainly larger time frames? So yeah, the the squid uh, the squid on the daily looks like uh, it thinks ICX is going up too. B bands are basically moving averages, so I combine them with moving averages. Oh. Oh, with other moving averages. Oh. Okay, so I think we think that ICX is going to get a little bounce here at least, if not a big one. Interesting. Okay, so does anybody have a coin they want me to chart? Any requests from the audience? Um, if not, we'll we'll do our nightly shill of FMF, which is um, Formosa Financial, um, which is a oh, life is a moving average. Of, <laughs> So I'm surprised that you don't use Super Guppy if you're in love with moving average. Um, you're you're aware of Super Guppy, right? Which is basically just like all moving averages. I'll show you this on the Super Guppy. Um, you're familiar with it, right? I actually love the Super Guppy. So like these are all um, EMAs, and like you have to sort of like learn how to use it a bit. Uh, which coins am I invested in? Well, I was just about to tell you about Formosa Financial. Uh, I mean, I'm invested in a lot of coins, but um, most of them are like uh, ICOs that haven't like come out yet that are like in pre-sales, so you, you wouldn't have heard of them yet. Um, but there's this one called FMF, which is a crypto bank out of Taiwan, um, which is uh, going to provide treasury services to other crypto exchanges, um, crypto corporations, and high net worth individuals, um, including like uh, tre treasury services, uh, fiat on ramping, um, custodial services, um, hedging, like we were just talking about, like the importance of like being able to like hedge your ETH if you're like an ICO who just raised like $40 million in ETH and suddenly like you're in a bear market and you need to like hedge your ETH into like. Uh, fiat, like uh, FMF will do that for you. Um, it's uh, It aims to be SEC compliant. Uh, yeah, services for ICOs, exactly. Um, it, uh, it It's, like I said, it's in Taiwan, which is uh, aiming to be like blockchain island, and um, F, uh, Formosa Financial is uh, in league with Taiwanese politicians. Um, yeah, and the good thing is they can test their treasury services for the ICOs on themselves since they are um, themselves uh, like a startup and an ICO. Um, so uh, DV and I are both uh, investors um, along with others that we know, and um, we're excited about it. Um, and you can buy it right now on IDAX, although it's not an official listing. It's just that like that's a place where like there's like a very, very um, small percentage of, of uh, the total supply being traded. Um, the official listing is going to happen probably soon, like probably within like the next six to eight weeks um, on like a top three exchange. Um, and yeah, I think that's, that's about it. Like, you know, considering that like custodial services and, um, you know, and, and like fiat on ramping are sort of like, the big memes of, of 2018 for uh, for crypto, like we're just really excited to be invested in a um, in a company that that's basically doing it all. Um, yeah, and IDEX is selling it really cheap right now because um, they're only selling something like I, I forget the exact number, but it's it's something like 0.25% of the total you know outstanding supply or like 0.025% of the total outstanding supply, like a, a really fraction like a minuscule uh, amount because the entire um, uh, sale happened like to, um, it, it was like a, a very private sale. Like it, it, it never went to the public. 
Um, so like we felt very lucky to get into the private sale. And um, so you can't, you can't buy size on IDEX. Like you can only buy like a very small amount right now, but the, the amount that you can buy is cheap. Um, so um, yeah, if you're interested, like, uh, now would be the time to buy it because I would say that it's an easy three to four X like within the next couple of months, if not much more than that. Um, so yeah, so I think that's all I have to say for tonight. Um, anything you want to add DV or anybody else? Uh, if not, I'm going to go for my swim because <laughs> it's still a little bit light out. Um, okay. Well, love you guys. Thanks for watching as always. And I will see you tomorrow night. And thank you for watching. I appreciate it. And good night. <laughs> Bye.